In this video, I'm going to show you some basic queries you can run in Flask SQL Alchemy. So before I can show you the queries, I just have a user model. I have some data in the database already and I'll show you that, but basically the user model has a name and email and a date join. So that's the information that I have in the database. So to get started with this, the first thing I'll do is I'll start up a Python REPL. So I'll just type Python. And then next what I'll do is I'll import the user model. So the user class I'm importing from my app file. And what I wanna do is I just want to do the most basic query. So user.query.all. And this gives me all of the results in my table. And I can see exactly how many by putting dot count on the end instead of dot all. So dot count just returns a number. So 26, I have 26 users in the database. The first query that I wanna show that's a little more interesting than querying for everything is the filter by. So the filter by allows you to take one field and provide a single value that will be filtered through the result. So this means that in this particular example, any user that has name equals Anthony will be returned in the result. So in this case, I'll do dot count first and we see only one user in my table has the name Anthony. And then when I do this again with dot all, I get a list with one item in it. However, when you're using a filter by with just one thing, oftentimes you want to get a specific thing. So instead of using dot all, you can use dot first. So I'll do the same filter by name equals Anthony. And then instead of dot all, I do dot first and it returns the object directly. So notice that the list tags are missing because I don't have a list. I just have the object itself. However, when you're using the filter by in this manner where you just want one thing, ideally you want to perform this query using a field that is unique. So in this particular case, email is unique, but name isn't. So if I do this on email, it makes sense. And I'll never have to worry about there being more than one result, but I just return the first of those results. So now I'll show you an equivalent query that has a little more power. So instead of using filter by, you can use filter. Then inside of it, you have to supply the class name and the field. So user.email, and then you use the comparison operator. So two equal signs, and then the actual value. So anthony at gmail.com, and then I can just do the ending after that. So dot all dot first dot counts, and it gives me the same result. So the reason why I showed you that is because you are able to create more complicated queries using filter. Filter by is much simpler, but filter gives you all the power of the SQL language when it comes to these basically where clauses, if you're familiar with SQL. So now I'll do a query using the date. So first I need to import date from date time so I can use this properly. Next I'll do user.query.filter, and this time I want to to do something on the date join. So I'll do user.date joined and I'll say is greater than date of, let's say January 1st of 2021. So if I do dot count, I get 26 because all of the users in the database joined after the beginning of 2021. So if I do this again, but instead of January 1st, I use July 1st and then do a count, we see I get 12 instead. Now I want to see all of these. So instead of using dot count at the end, I'll use dot all. And now I can see all of the users that joined after July 1st. By the way, if you made it this far in the video, you're probably really interested in Flask SQL Alchemy. So I've created a free course called Flask SQL Alchemy Basics where I cover it in much more depth. So if you want to join this course, just go to my website, prettyprinted.com slash Flask SQL. I'll put a link in the description below as well if you want to click there. Now back to the video. Next, I want to show you order buys. So... Order buys allows me to sort the results. And what I'll do here is after the filter, I'll add a dot order by, and I'll supply the name of the class and then the field I'm interested in, just like before. So just like with filter, so user.name, and then I can supply either ASC or DESC. So ASC is for ascending and DESC is for descending. So I'll order by user.name.descending. And what this allows me to do is see the results in the order with the highest name first. So typically alphabetical order goes from A to Z, but if I do it descending, then it goes from Z to A. So here we see Yosef is the first one followed by Xylee and then Thomas, and then we see Charlie is the last one. So it's in descending order. And then I can do another order by, and this time I can use the date and it's basically the same process. So instead of user.name.descending, what I'll do is user.datejoin.asc for ascending. And then this will give me the results in ascending order according to the date that they join. So what I'll do is I'll return all all the users to a variable called users. So it's basically the same query. And if I just type users, we see there. And then I'll loop over users. So for user in user, then I'll print user.date underscore joined. And now I see the dates are in order because I added the order by to the query. The results are in a particular order and it's ordered by the date. So those are the most basic queries I can think of to show you. Obviously there are much more, but that's the basic foundation. So as you want more complicated queries, basically add more to the filter and then 
however you want to sort them, you can with the order by. And then just know that if you're expecting one result, use dot first. And if you're expecting more than one result, then use dot all.